Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN SC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined in the studio today by Craig Burley. We also welcome to the programme. Frank LeBuff is here, as is Shaka Hislop, as we're learning... Can't win a game, can they, the French these days? Well, we... <laughs> Start the show, you It's a random... Hey, like... Frank, just say that, look, how is Scotland doing in the World Cup? That's the response you need. Sorry. Uh, let's uh, kick things off, shall we? Uh, by I hearing... don't want to say anything, I just want to say hi. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah, are, you hi, see. Hi, Craig. Nice yeah, to see exactly. you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Robert Lewandowski has been speaking more about his future. I want to leave Bayern. That's clear. I'm leaving because I want more emotions in my life. Uh, they didn't want to listen to me until the end. Something died inside me, and it's impossible to get over that. Even if you want to be professional, you can't make up for it. When you have been at the club for so many years, you're always ready, you're available, despite the injuries and pain you gave your best. I think it'll be best to find a good solution for both sides and not to look for a one-sided decision. Loyalty and respect are more, more important than business, but they don't want to listen to me. What kind of player wants to go to buy and knowing that something like this could happen to them? I'm a bit like that, you know, when I found out you were in today again, a little bit of me dies inside every well, day every too. day, yeah, exactly. But look, that's a, that's a bit, that's a bit, that's a lot over the top, isn't it? You think so? You know, people who want to come to buy are knowing, look, end of the day, he did sign a contract, right? Mm-hmm, he's got one year left. So he did sign that, nobody signed it for him, nobody grabbed his hand and signed it, made him sign it, he, he did it. So, you know, there's an argument from both sides. And I, I get it. I've been in those scenarios where sometimes things change and you want to leave or, or whatever, and the, both parties have to play ball or Bayern have to play ball. But that's a little bit over the top, a little bit crybaby, that statement for me. Uh, you know, about, oh, nobody want to... Of course people want to go to Bayern. Right. Yeah, is it a perfect club? Ask Jan Fjortov. He'll tell you behind the scenes, one person says one thing, another person says another, another person says this. That's not ideal, but just because he's not getting at the moment what he wants, it seems to me that there's not enough, you know, tissue paper to go around to dry his eyes. Is he being a crybaby, Frank? Uh, I would say a little bit, well, f yes, for me, because in a way that you signed for a club, you all you wanted, and uh, and there is a there is a, a time where everybody wants you. Uh, there is another time where it's time for you to leave because you are at the end of the cycle and you know somebody's going to replace you. The most important thing is in football are clubs, they're not players. You go, you come and go, and that's, that's just, that is part of our lives. And uh, I, I, I was so happy to sign for Strasbourg and uh, I felt sometimes that I had to leave. And the same for Chelsea. And every club, and Lewandowski knows that by heart, uh, they, they, they do that because they have to make sure there is a... There is a future of, and a bright future for the club, and Bayern Munich is, look, is seeking for that. So I think, yeah, what he does is like, he'll be crying, and he plays a dangerous game. Because as far as we know, only one club wants him, and he hasn't got the money for it. So, you know, where he's going to end up? Well, even if I think he's going to end up somewhere because he's a fantastic player, uh, I have some question marks about this tactic. The argument is, isn't it, Shaka, the fact that basically Bayern flirted with Haaland, wanted to do everything to get Haaland there, couldn't get it through, and therefore delayed giving Lewandowski any sort of contract extension. Now it's too little too late. Yeah, it is. And it just depends on, on what angle you come at this from. From the club's perspective, you want who is arguably the best well, upcoming young striker in, in football. He's available this summer. He's not going to be available for quite some time yet. Um, he's playing in Germany. So you, you, you test her arm. You, you, try, you take that chance to see if, if you can get him. The problem for Bayern is that it coincided with Lewandowski's best year as an individual, best scoring year as an, as an individual. So now you have to balance up going after and securing your future, so to speak, and upsetting your player after his, his, his best season. It didn't work out with Haaland, and I, I sympathize with, with Lewandowski. After breaking the 40-year-old record, that's not how, how you want to be rewarded, and, and you want you want to go somewhere that, that you'll be needed. Right now, to, to Frank's point a minute ago, right now it seems that, that Barcelona in pole position, but there are any number of clubs who would snap their, their hand off to, to, to get Lewandowski, not just Barcelona. But, but surely even Lewandowski understands that, that Bayern had to make an attempt to sign 
arguably the hottest young striker on the planet because, I mean, surely his ego's not that big that he doesn't realise that he's not the future long term and that if they were able to sign him, maybe then the, the pathway to a move would have been simpler. But surely he's got to understand. We don't, there's none of us like to see players coming in in our position, but I think when you, you're in your 30s, uh, you have to expect the club to be looking a bit further down the line. Uh, this smells to me as if it could get to a stage, and I have no experience in this, by the way, before you mention it, about, as, as Frank said, the dangerous tactics right. of, I'm just throwing this out there, I don't know what conversations he's had about being professional and being this, but he could throw the baby out with the bathwater here and basically say to them, you'll not be getting much out of me next year. And that becomes a very, very dangerous game for the club and for Nagelsmann is what kind of player am I keeping? How is that going to fester in the dressing room? Yeah, how would, how would it fester in the dressing room? Well, what effect does that have? You were talking about... Well, I tell you, I don't, I don't have a... No, I have absolutely no issue with... If it was me playing and Frank wanted to leave Chelsea or Zola or Henrik Larsson wanted to leave Celtic, as he did after many years and went to Barcelona... But if he'd wanted to leave after two years at the club, hey, we all want what's best for ourselves as players. Right. We want the best moves, the most money, the most glamour, the biggest stage. I have no issue with that. What, what I would have an issue with, if he doesn't get his move and he comes back into the dressing room and it affects how we're able to do our job. Right. That then becomes a problem for the players and a problem for the manager and then it's a problem for the club. So this is a very interesting stance from Lewandowski so far. It could get more aggressive, but it just seems to me is that he he uh, is extremely, extremely upset that Bayern at the moment are not playing ball. Uh, for a lot more on what happens with Robert Lewandowski in his future, and of course, some of the other big transfer news at the moment, be sure to go over to the website and click on Transfer Talk. I imagine there maybe were some sore heads in Wales this morning after celebrations as they booked a place in the World Cup with that 1-0 victory over Ukraine. Uh, Gareth Bale on the back page of every single newspaper. Of course, the Welsh captain at the heart of the victory, which sees Wales back in the World Cup for the first time since 1958. That is a 64-year hiatus. Gareth Bale is now a free agent. There's, what, three or four months to go until the World Cup starts or the preparation for it certainly begins. What would you do, Craig, if you were Gareth Bale? We talked about this yesterday and I'm intrigued to get your opinion. Well, what he can do... Well, he can. He could take a, a, a sabbatical. Mm -hmm. But I doubt he's going to do that because he needs game time. But he hasn't had game time for Real Madrid, has he? And, he? and he turns it on for Wales, so why not just continue no, that kind of... We can't sit at home and then just go and play in a World Cup. No, but you can have personal trainers, people around... So people no, to... no, it don't, don't work. It, it just doesn't work. But it worked for him this season. No, he's been training. He's been training and he's play. You know, he's got to find a... I think he's got to find a home, even if it's on a short-term contract, that he's getting at least one game a week. I do. Uh, otherwise, I think for Wales come the World Cup, it's going to be a gigantic waste of time. Where would that home be? I've no idea. In an ideal world? Well, Man City. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's all then. Bayern, I mean, I mean Real Madrid. That's <laughs> an ideal world. Barcelona, they haven't got the money. Uh, I don't know, somewhere where he's happy and comfortable, he's going to get game time. I, I do think he needs that. I do. There's, there's talk of, for example, Cardiff City. No, I, well, I don't know. The Championship, I tell you what, the Championship's a tough, tough league. There's a lot of big bruisers in that Championship. There's a lot of good players in the Championship, but right. there's a lot of big bruisers in there. And So who in the Premier it's, League? It's, who it's who very in the Premier physical. League, then, if that's where we're at? Would you say this, this could work? And would you want him in a locker room knowing that he's got one eye on the World Cup? And he's only really committed till November, and you don't know what's going to happen till after then. Somebody might take a chance on him. We saw Aston Villa taking a punt of somewhat on Coutinho, and they've went on a bit of a signing spree. 
somebody like that, I'm not suggesting Villa, but somebody like that who might just take a punt on a short-term contract on a half decent wage incentivised by by goals and by by minutes and game time so it's not going to it's not going to cost them fortunes unless he delivers right. so I think that's the kind of thing if I was Gareth Bale I would be looking for to be honest with you what would you do Shaq? I, I, I'm, I'm really not sure, I, and the, the reason I say that is because I, I don't think there is the ideal opportunity out there for, for Gareth Bale. On the one hand, Cardiff City just makes sense because of, of, of how much he's contributed to Welsh football, albeit through the national team, and I, I think primarily he, he should be happy, relaxed, comfortable, and you want a club, to, to, to Don's point yesterday, you want a club who will allow him to, to choose the days he trains. But... As Craig is saying, the, the championship is so different from everything that he'd been used to. And if he's doing that with one eye on the World Cup, everything that he can expect at, at the World Cup. So while he might get games and while he might get to pick and choose what days he trains, I don't think it really prepares him for the World Cup. But then if you're a Premier League club, let's say, do you give Gareth Bale a home for six months just so he can be fit for the World Cup? I don't think any, any Premier League club is, is thinking like that either. So is it MLS? Same as Cardiff. Very different from what you would expect. So I, it, it really is a, a conundrum for, for Gareth Bale that I don't think there's a, a good answer to. What do you think, Frank? I think uh, I, I listened to what uh, Stevie was saying yesterday uh, uh, on your show and saying that they need to find a club to play. I agree with the guys. The championship is, uh, is even, even tougher than the Premier League in terms of physical, uh, in the physical aspect of the game. But he has to find something, uh, somebody at a club to play for because, again, I don't, I don't buy the fact that he's going to be ready for a World Cup. And if he has to play at least three games in a row... Every three days, he won't, he won't be ready. Uh, even if you are fit and you just do the, the training sessions, when you play a game, it's different. It's different rhythm. It's very complicated. So you can pretend one game once in a while, but a tournament, a World Cup tournament, no, I don't buy it. Even if he's a, he showed to the world that he can do miracles. But he has to find something. I was thinking about maybe going to France. Well, he will have to make sure that uh, his paycheck is, uh, is lower than expected, but he can go to France where football is maybe less physical than in England uh, and he can find clubs who would be sure, surely willing to, to hire him if he, uh, if he goes to a normal wage, I would say. Would you welcome him into a locker room? Say you're, you're, you're a French team, Frank, coming in knowing that maybe you're just a vehicle to get him fit for a World Cup? Oh yes, you don't, we, we don't care. We, uh, Craig mentioned that about, uh, about uh, uh, Lewandowski and, uh, and the fight it could be a problem. Players don't care about that. As, sure, as, as, as long as the player does the job and uh, gives everything, no problem. Of course, if he cheats and takes your, your seat and uh, you're on the bench because of him, you're going to create problems. But if he does what he does with, uh, with, uh, with Wales, well, he's more than welcome and he can do whatever he wants and he can stay only four months. I remember playing with George Weah the last six months of his career and he only played, he was ready to play maybe 15 minutes. But the 15 minutes that he played every time, he was doing, you know, so many bad things to, the, to opponents that we were <laughs> only happy to have him. But you don't expect anything from anybody, you just expect the best. <laughs> That's it. And, and if, well, if Bells does what he does with Wells, you know, you can come to any club. You always ask that question. You always ask that question. About I always ask many questions. No, but you always, ask, you always say about how will that go down in the dressing room. Yeah. You're giving too much uh, credence to what players actually think about. No, but that's because you've been there and you know it. No, no, but you're but giving that... too much credibility to, to, to the players in terms of what they care about. Right. Do you know, if I... I <laughs> People come in and out of dressing rooms, all, all sorts of different characters come in and out of dressing rooms. You know, people that mix, people that don't, quiet, loud, blah, 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 blah. P players generally don't care, right? The dressing room is the dressing room. Right. You know, you, you, all right, you can maybe get one or two that don't get on with people and sometimes it can be a problem. But players understand, you know, that 
you, you often ask about if a player's getting transferred or he wants to move, how does that affect him? Mm. <laughs> That's part of the business. Right. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if he goes somewhere for six months, of course the players know it's a vehicle to try and keep fit. And by the way, if he doesn't keep some semblance of fitness, the, the chances of him getting injured, arguably in the first game at the World Cup, are quite strong anyway. Mm. So you have to find something. And, and it's all very well saying, I'll keep myself fit at home or whatever, but you'll become lazy. I'm, te and I'm telling you, we already know his desire to be the best Gareth Bale day in, day out has diminished. OK, he turns up for Wales and he does a great job. But we've seen it at Real Madrid in the last two years. You add in another three or four months of that, maybe longer, till the World Cup, and it starts to grate on you. Ah, I'll just have a day off today. I'm not, no, right. There's nobody pushing you, really. Then how would that affect the Wales stressing room? Fitness instructor, knocking <laughs> at, fitness instructor knocking at your door and you just shut the blinds, you know what I mean? <laughs> nah, <laughs> hey, That's it. Hey, what day is it? Come back Thursday. <laughs> so he, needs to, he needs to find something that is le at least giving him uh, the input and desire to get in there and at least do something every day. Right. OK, well, a lot more on this, I'm sure. Over anyway, Wales are not going to win the World Cup, so it's not that big a deal anyway. Well, it's quite, it's quite an interesting debate, isn't no, it? No, no, I, I yeah, yeah, it. but I just said Wales are not going to win the World Cup. Oh, I don't think... Well, or even get out of the group. Only one team's going to win the World Cup, isn't it? But we can't focus on that, because we don't know who it's going to be. Uh, extra time... No, it, it's not going to be. Well, yes, yeah, Scotland. Wales. <laughs> Check out Extra Time over on the YouTube channel. Uh, Shaka and Frank back to answer your questions. We haven't talked about Manchester United for a while. Well, um, I've not been in since Wednesday, that's why. <laughs> uh, taking a look at what's going on, uh, Fan Matter, Jesse Lingard, Nemanja Matic, Ralph Rangnick, Paul Pogba, Cavani and Matt Judge. Well, what position did Ralph Rangnick play? <laughs> I tell you, we didn't play a very good one. He was, he was, but uh, I tell you what, I look at, you know the one thing I look at looking at that? Jesse Lingard wasted another year. Yeah, yeah and he no. wanted out, didn't he? He wanted out before. Uh, for more on this, let's welcome in, shall we, former Ajax midfielder and Dutch international. Uh, Marciano Vink is with us once again. Uh, lots to talk about with regards to what's going to happen next season for Manchester United, Marciano. Let's start off, shall we, with Ten Hag. Right man for the job yeah. in your eyes? Uh, the perfect man for the job. Uh, Ten Hag, uh, you know, he did a tremendous job uh, at Ajax. And, um, well, he was backed, uh, of course, by uh, Mark Overmars. That's really important for him to succeed in uh, Man United, being backed by the board, being backed by the technical director. Uh, Overmars, uh, along the way, uh, had his back, and he, he did a tremendous job. Four and a half years, he gave the, the, the audience, he gave Ajax a face again, you know, and, um, well... He left the club on a high, so I hope for him that he's going to do really well at Man United and especially that they give him the time to do well. He's taking over, though, Marciano, a team that is so fractured. There seems to be so many problems within that squad. Yeah. How is he going to be able to address that? Yeah, first of all, you need to uh, get the players in and they really need to want to play for Man United. And, of course, Man United is not in the Champions League. They're in the Europa League. Uh, that will affect probably uh, some players because they want to play uh, in the Champions League. For instance, Frankie de Jong, I think he will be brilliant at Man United. He's a player Man United needs because uh, the transition between the defense and midfield, just the style of play, the dominant style of play, he is the man who can who can give it. And, and he knows Ten Hag, of course. In defense, they need uh, uh, to reinforce. And the name Timber is being, uh, yeah, being named as one of the probably um, guys they want to bring in. And uh, Timber, in my opinion, he's uh, uh, a very gifted young player. He's uh, given Ajax already on his very ju juvenile age very much. And he's um, always comfortable on the ball. He's a good defender. But most of all, he anticipates really well. So those kinds of players you need to bring in to get Man United to a higher level. I know for e England, they're not uh, the, the common names or the, the well-known names. But you need to get start playing football again. I have seen many matches of Man United. And it was lacking pace. It was lacking football. There were too many players, uh, yeah, maybe satisfied by playing for Man United and not 
eager to win, not eager to uh, to play for the club. So he has to change uh, the behavior, the mentality in the club, and it's going to take a while. Frankie de Jong, as you mentioned, of course, heavily linked to a move to Manchester United. Uh, this is what Lou van Gaal had to say about one of his Dutch internationals. He came out and said Frankie de Jong always plays well with the national team. Here we try to play him to his strengths. Uh, de Jong yes. also added to that saying I play a lot differently here than I do at Barca. I think this suits me much better. I like to be the first player to receive the ball from the defenders. If you, if you were to offer him some advice, both of these after that 4-1 victory against Belgium, would you tell him yeah. to leave Barcelona? Um, I know Frankie a little bit, Frankie de Jong, and he is an eager player. He wants to prove himself. He, he, is, he is not satisfied with, with his role, but he is not satisfied with uh, his performance at Barcelona. For sure, he wants to do better and he wants to prove everybody that he's the right man. But as long as uh, Busquets is playing in his role, it's going to be very difficult. For me, it's a no-brainer to go to Man United and and um, yeah, link up again with uh, with your former manager and and just give Man United a new face. And for me, that's a more challenging thing than waiting for Busquets to uh, retire. Makes sense. Well, I, I understand that he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to leave Barcelona. In a, in a sense that they haven't seen the best of him. But is that going to happen if he's going to be, continue to be played where he's being played? Mm -hmm. So then it becomes exactly. a personal decision. It becomes a personal decision. You know, he is the player. We've seen him quite a lot at Barcelona getting in the box, making those late runs. But quite often in games, you don't see him getting on the ball. That's because Busquets for years has been the fulcrum of what they do. It all, all goes through sort of him. Maybe yeah. he'll get maybe he'll get that at Manchester United. I, I don't know. It's a, it's a difficult one to answer because it's such a great club, Barcelona, albeit with its problems. Uh, but we're certainly. I don't think there's any debate about we're not seeing the best of and haven't seen the best of Frankie De Jong at Barcelona. How much of a difference does it make, Craig, that he's played under Ten Hag before? Oh, well, a big difference. A big difference. I think a lot of players are drawn to managers that they can that they have a, a good feeling to, a good relationship with, who they think is a player and you think is a player, the manager understands what's getting the best out of you. And, and obviously Manchester United, with all their problems, are still a huge club. It's trying to convince the likes of De Jong and others that it's not going to be too long before they're back in that pack with City and Liverpool challenging domestically and in a European front. But, but having a former manager potentially wanting you it is, is a big deal. Marciano, how do the Dutch fans yeah. see it? Where do they want him to go? Do they want him to stay at Barca or go to United? You know, Barcelona is, uh, is uh, very popular in Holland because of the, the, the history, the Dutch players uh, that have been playing there. So everybody sees the romantic side of Barcelona. But, um, you know, uh, for me, it's just all about getting Frankie de Jong uh, up to his best level. And I do believe that uh, Man United is going to be the place where he, he can develop and also help Man United get back where, in my opinion, they belong. Because he is a special player. He's a guy who can dribble, who can uh, uh, put players on the wrong foot. He can create situations. He like how we uh, um, guided uh, Nathan Ake in the in the match against Belgium, where he should be playing, you know, higher up. He's a, he's a leader. He's a really a leader. And I do believe, honestly, that Man United is lacking leaders. Uh, of course, uh, they have uh, great players, but leaders, besides Ronaldo, I, I don't see them. And you need somebody who is going to make the transition from defense to midfield and, and start directing the play. Uh, you mentioned Jurian Timber before, obviously an exciting young defender, but it's a big ask, yeah. isn't it, to come to Manchester United and what take the place of either Harry Maguire this or Varane? But maybe he, he can play alongside Harry Maguire, but this guy is ice cold. What this guy has shown in Champions League against Haaland, what he has shown in the national team uh, already on this age, 
he doesn't blink and and that's uh, special this guy is so comfortable on the ball and you know what i already said he anticipates like the best and for me a defender needs to anticipate you know you can be a strong defender you can be tall but if you don't know how to anticipate where the ball is going or be ahead of the uh, attacker you know then you're not a good defender but this guy he anticipates like the best so for me it's uh, somebody who could easily play in the in the premier league but also could help uh, man united uh, from the back uh, football wise do you think timber will start in the world cup uh, uh, yeah, I think so, because now uh, there's this discussion going on in Holland. Uh, we have, of course, uh, now all of a sudden we have these tremendous uh, defenders like uh, Van Dijk. Uh, um, we have De Ligt, De Vrij, all playing for top teams, Nathan Ake. But this guy, Jurian Timber, he, he yeah, benched uh, De Ligt and De Vrij, two world-class uh, defenders in Italy. So, um, but he's doing his job. You know, he's, you saw it uh, in the match against Belgium. He's, he's cool with it, with his, uh, with his performance, but also he knows what to do and especially he knows what not to do. And that's, I think, his, uh, yeah, strength. Final question, looking at the fact, obviously, Ten Hag now at Manchester United. How much does that raise the profile of already a huge club, I imagine, in the Netherlands to another level? Uh, sorry, again? One, one, Ten Hag one. taking over at United now. How much yeah. are they going to become like the Dutch club? Uh, I don't know. We had already Van Gaal over there. It wasn't a big success. <laughs> but, um, you know... Um, Eric Ten Hag is uh, from the east part of Holland where uh, people are down to earth, you know, uh, uh, no nonsense, a little bit stubborn. But uh, I do believe that uh, given time, Man United might be a Dutch uh, uh, favorite club. So uh, let's see. Martiano, as always, uh, thank you very much. Speaking of stubborn, the latest edition of the Gavin Jules podcast is available now to listen to over on the website. Be sure to check it out. Nations League action on Monday saw Croatia draw 1-1 against France. It would be the French who would take the lead seven minutes into the second half through Rabiot. Uh, France looked good, didn't they, for much of this game, Craig? They did, but they made a lot of changes, Daniel. Yeah, and the changes in the end came back to bite them. Cramridge with a penalty with seven minutes to go. Singer and Croatia won. France won, uh, leaving France still without a win in this Nations League group, sitting in third. Denmark sit at the top with a 100% record after a 2-1 victory over Austria. Frank Leboeuf. What do you want to say about this game? Uh, that it was a very good game. And, and as Craig mentioned, uh, there were ten uh, changes from, uh, from the first game and, uh, and uh, the loss against Denmark. And it was refreshing, I would say, to see some players like uh, Nkunku, Diaby, also Kamara, uh, celebrating, celebrating his uh, first cap. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it was nice to see those players, you know, uh, having a little bit of time. And uh, Didier Deschamps explained that because of... Uh, the time of the season, meaning the end of the season and the, the tiniest of some players, they had to make some changes uh, because two games in, in three days. And I think it was nice to see those players showing to the others that uh, there is a real competition. Uh, Deschamps again said, we said that uh, uh, it was a, a, a game for the preparation for the World Cup already, uh, that uh, he wants to make it wide in terms of players to make sure that the list is, uh, is wide enough for, for him to, to, to get the right choices. Uh, it was a good game. Uh, and, uh, and I don't know if the draw is, uh, is fair, but it was nice to see young players um, showing to the world that uh, we have a future. Oh, good to know, Frank. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Should do with that squad. Yes, indeed. Uh, England, Germany tomorrow. We'll be talking you through that game on the next edition of the show. Craig and Shaka will be with me. Neymar has closed the gap to just three goals now on Pele to become the all-time top goal scorer in the history of international Brazilian football. A 1-0 victory over Japan makes it 74 goals. Dodgy penalty, he won't care. 
uh, Brazil with a 1-0 win in that game. Meanwhile, you've got a top goals La Liga special. Now, that's on Wednesday, 11 a.m. Eastern. That's when it drops on ESPN+. Plus. will, of course, be available after that. Be sure to check it out. It took me ages to do that. Did it? Yes. How, how many goals did you choose? Uh, 15. <laughs> Can you imagine you doing that show? <laughs> top 50 goals. Oh, another one. Oh, who wants to watch this? <laughs> Why have we got this on? There's some good ones in the Liga. Oh, there you this go. Year. Mostly scored by Vinicius Jr. <laughs> <laughs> and Benzema, who only scores tap-ins. Yeah, you are. Yep, Barley. one of Steve Nichols' uh, <laughs> more famous quotes. And that is it. We are done. Shaka and Frank back for extra time. Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you very much for your tweets. Craig Burley with us here in the studio. Frank LaBeouf and Shaka Hislop as well. Uh, the first tweet says, hey Dan, Dan now that Dan, we have... Dan, can I say something? Of course you can, Frank. Dan, before we start, can I, can I, can I say something about that fantastic penalty Brazil just caught, got? Right. I want to know if when Richarlison kicked the guy, if it's yes. a fair penalty, because really, that's crazy. And I, uh, I was that about the, the fact, you know, in France, uh, the penalty for France, where the player put his leg in the middle, there is a contact, okay, I can accept that there is a penalty. But the yeah. penalty Brazil got, yes. really, it's, it's, it's a farce. It's a real it was farce. Ju- it was just a friendly against Japan, where was that it doesn't played? really matter. Yeah, it's always matter when you play for your country. When you're a Japanese player and you play for your country, you know, you don't want to lose, even if it's a friendly game. Oh, what did you make of the Yarmolenko one yesterday? Did you see that, Frank? Uh, no, I didn't see. Oh, the, the, oh, yes, hold on a second. I think there was a penalty. I don't remember. I tried to remember. I remember Joe I saw Allen that. Joe Allen goes penalty. to kick the ball. Yarmolenko I think there was a pe- goes, gets yeah, in the way. There is a penalty. There is yes. a penalty. Yes. Mm-hmm. Penalty, yeah, that's yes. Penalty. That's, that's, a, penalty. that's a strange one, isn't it? The, uh, that, that one significant. VAR. There was VAR there, yeah? Yes, yes. It was not far there. The years of our... <sighs> strange, isn't it? Yeah, that was a strange one. But I mean, just as a generalisation, some a lot of decisions this year, mm. m- maybe not just this year, a lot of decisions that you think, oh, right. Yes. It's like the championship playoff final between Huddersfield and Nottingham Forest, mm-hmm. wasn't it? You were yeah. like, oh, uh, yeah. Forrester. Forrester stuffed here. Yes. Because on, on reflection, the, the two of them are penalties, uh, at least one of them. Yeah. Well, according to Frank, and uh, <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Nothing. No. Peter Walton, all that. Peter Walton, our ex-colleague, yeah. who uh, is some disappeared, uh, is uh, was right all along. Yeah. Referees find it difficult to look at a monitor and go, oh. By jolly, that's a foul. I think the Rodbury handball against Everton is top of the tree. With regards no. to why oh, I did take good, good yes, yes. <laughs> that, that Go on, Shaq, what are you saying? Yeah, no, I was saying to that point, I, I, every referee goes to the monitor and doesn't change his mind. I, I, at least that's a step forward from where we are. I'm, I hear this clear and obvious error, and so therefore yeah. the VAR is not going to intervene and send the referee. I find that I find that absolutely ridiculous. You had that in, in, in the Ukraine game. I'm, I'm going to guess they had that in Brazil, Japan. I, I just I just don't get it. Send the referee. Let him have a look. If he doesn't change his mind, we can criticize him then. But this clear and obvious is just ridiculous. I, well, you were on you were on the rules at one point. I blame you. Yeah. When you over there getting your should have fought your, harder when you're. IFAB. Getting your brown envelope and just <laughs> having a jolly up. Hey, I hate pundits. I tell you what. <laughs> that, 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 that's you. Up. You're a pundit. No, I hate pundits right. that sit there at half time or at the end of a game and go, well, not surprised that wasn't done because I'm not sure it was clear and obvious. I want to punch them. Right. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Do your bloody job. Yeah. It's a free kick or not a free kick. It's an infringement or not an infringement. It's not clear and obvious. Is it an infringement? Yes or no? There you go. Would but you, you have too many. Would you like to name names? No. That'd be fun. Oh, that's good. It. <laughs> Craig's, Craig's power rankings of pundits he hates. <laughs> Bang. Bang. I should do a power ranking of pundits I want to punch. Yeah, oh, that'd be I fun. think I'd be top of the tree. <laughs> punch, <laughs> my, <laughs> punch myself. Punch myself. <laughs> what's in that pot behind you there? What's that, what's that lid off? <laughs> what, what? What's going on behind your left shoulder? A penguin, no? Oh, it's a, a candle, penguin. apparently. Oh, beautiful, Shag. Apricot chantilly. 
What a waste of money. Well, you, buy, you, should buy the, you should buy these candles that are fake candles. Right, yes. You've seen them. Frank bought them for me for my house. They light up. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. They don't light up. But you switch them on. It's brilliant. Yeah, Frank bought because he came over for dinner. He bought us a present. It's nice. Well, most people wouldn't have come onto somebody's yeah. house to take a bottle of wine. Oh, I know. Frank. Lovely man, Frank is. Oh, what a lovely man. Beautiful. Yeah, Thank when you. was he last at well, your house? I, when was that? Last summer? Oh. Right, yeah. Well, that's where summer. Get? So are, you you never... be, are, are you going to be at home in July? Because yeah, your so... wife invited me, so but you were to, you, but you were, I was told that you weren't you wouldn't be there. Uh, be well, that's maybe something that's we should discuss off the camera. Read the... <laughs> <laughs> On that note, read the question. <laughs> quick, quick. <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> hey, Dan, now that we have the gabometer yeah. back, the gabometer was back yesterday. Was it, was it that thing that goes along? Yes, <laughs> right. that thing, the numbers. Um, when are we going to get Burley's boiling point back? I've, 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 champi <laughs> I've, I, I, I've championed it to my boss, our right. boss, yes. on a daily basis. Yeah. And it's just... First just, subject, pundits. I want to punch. We just don't have the manpower. <laughs> for great. We just don't have the manpower. Who was better in their prime? <laughs> you know the it's original you. plan for that? Maybe we don't have the manpower. It's you! <laughs> yes. We need, a, we need a camera. We've got one there. Oh, yeah. That's a camera. <laughs> uh, and we need words. What was the original plan? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Well, it was to get some uh, sponsorship behind it. Oh, no one wanted sponsorship. Well, it was too controversial. <laughs> <laughs> no one wanted to be associated with you. I quite enjoyed No, I didn't enjoy it. I did. No, you ran out of steam, then you got bored. It did run out of steam. Yeah. It was a good idea at the time from yes. somebody, I don't know who. Yeah. Uh, for Craig, who was better in their prime, Zola or Larson? Oh, bloody hell. Oh, come Ooh. on. Oh. That's a question I shouldn't have to answer. Why not? Because you're a pundit. That's different. what you're paid to do, to answer these questions. It's not clear and obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not clear and obvious. Punch myself again. Like, I'm going to punch, punch you. I'm going to yeah, punch, punch you. Punch me in the Greg. nose. Come on. Uh, uh, who are you picking first? <laughs> for your team? Who am I picking first? Yes. Uh, Zola, come on, Zola. You have to say Zola. Oh, come on. I played. Oh, wow. Henrik. Really? Just to annoy Frank? No. Ha! Oh, yes, yes. No, you come on. Wow. Yeah, they were both. Come on, Henrik Larsson played not just Celtic and Sweden with uh, Ibrahimovic, Barcelona, and I mean, they were both different. I just want goals. Right? But I didn't goals, play, goals, goals. You didn't play the same position, Craig. No, I want goals, and Henrik's Craig, getting me goals. You didn't play goals. the same position. No, I know, I know, I know. Who are you picking first, right? I just remember. In terms of... Well, I didn't play... I didn't have the chance to play for Henrik Larsson, so, uh, but I saw him playing. And I think, I think in terms of influence in the game, Zola was more influence, uh, uh, influence in the game for me because he was in the middle of the park. Larsson was more, more finisher than, uh, than a creator. I think Zola was more a creator for the others too. See, Frank's just trying to make friends again with Chelsea fans by saying Zola. I think I, I no. really. <laughs> I burnt my bridges. To. Well, yes, <laughs> from. yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what only, do you want to say, Shaq? Craig. Is Frank saying something? Come on. Oh, he's always saying something. No, oh, no, no. Go go on, you, go on. <laughs> oh, no, I, I was just going to say, Larson played for Sweden in 2006 World Cup, and he didn't score me either. Yeah. So it's got to be Zola. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. That's, that's all I did got. You I played did you one play game in my career that I talk about. There you go. That what, did you nil play nil. against Sweden? Eh. Nil-nil in the Sweden, eh, eh. isn't it? What, they must have not had any shots that's on so target then. That some people are saying in the show, <laughs> in the show, uh, the only one who's not, who's, not, who's not humble, it's me. I don't think so. I think some other people are, you they're know, they're have a big head players. like me. I don't like these <laughs> tough questions. It's a good job you don't ask me tough questions. No. Uh, which former teammate or opponent surprised you by going into coaching or become a manager after their playing career ended? Is there a former teammate that left football but you wish had stayed involved and got into coaching or managing? That's a good question. Which former teammate or somebody? I don't know, maybe Mark Hughes, it's a long I don't know, Sparky, maybe uh, yeah. Malky McKay. But Stevie says he's very quiet. Oh, Stevie Clark. My Stevie, 
Who said what? Mar what? Stevie what? says Mark Hughes very quiet. Very. Yeah. Very well. Very quiet, but yeah, he can he can tell when he needs to be. Right. I mean, obviously, he was a bit of a he was an animal on the field. Yeah. But off it. Uh, there's, there's a lot I've gone in. Frank, were you, you, were you surprised that Zidane went into coaching? Definitely. That's uh, when the question came out, you know, the, the first guy that I had in mind was Zizou. I never thought he will, uh, he will go for it. Uh, it was so far away from that, that I never thought that he will uh, uh, engage, you know, uh, some thought about that. But uh, he did well, well, more than well. <laughs> but another one that I thought he would be uh, in it is Dennis Wise. I thought Dennis would go for coaching. He didn't. Shaq? Well, hold on, he coached at... Oh. Uh, he was at Millwall for a little bit. Yeah, but it's not... Uh, yeah, a little bit. But professionally wise, you know, at the top level, I thought he will, uh, will, bo will, be, will be more involved. What's well, gone? Shaq? Uh, Paolo Di Canio. Easy. I didn't see that happening. <laughs> well, last reason, reason. Uh, for Frank, with all the talented centre backs at Deschamps' disposal, who do you think is the best centre back pairing for France? Wow, well, that's a tough question. Because um, even if they are they're very good, I don't see one who had a very, very good season. Varan had a tough season. But last mm. time he went out, and it's when France conceded goals. Uh, Kipembe makes uh, mistakes almost every day, every game that he plays, even if he's a top, top defender. Uh, you have Kamara, who uh, play, can play in the midfield zone, but plays also at the back. Saliba is uh, for sure the future of the national team. Who's the for best centre back pairing, uh, Frank? You we don't need a Wikipedia of every France defender. <laughs> So far, so far, oh come on. So far, I will go. Um, uh, Varan and uh, Kipembe for the experience. Craig, managers like Thomas Frank and Graham Potter have done a great job this season with a smaller budget. But is that the same skill set needed to manage a club competing at the top every year? Uh. No, because the way that you, and, and you don't have to agree if this is the correct way to do it, but the way you have to, the way you speak to certain players is not the way you have to deal with others. So dealing with the big timers is completely different. Okay. You know what I mean? So how did they deal with you? What do you mean? Well, we say, but dealing with guys who have been playing the championship and are not big household names they'll tend to listen to you a bit more you have to be a little different when you're dealing with the real big timers so it's a different it's a different skill set for sure right. I think Nagelsmann's finding that out a little bit moving from slightly less of a jump from Leipzig to Bayern it's not jumping from the Bundesliga too mm. but still he was the star Thomas Frank is and, and, uh, is the star of Brentford in some sense it's all about him keeping them up yeah if you go to the other teams yeah you're still a star but it's full of big players so it's, it's different I would imagine unless the guys think something different I don't know we've got plenty of time Dan's in a rush today it seems I'm not in a rush I just uh, we got lots of questions have we well, you're, well do you, want, you, want, you want to stay? No. <laughs> okay, Shaka, rank these three goalkeeping performances. Courtois in the Champions League final, Wayne Hennessy against Ukraine, and Shaka Hislop versus Sweden in 2006. <laughs> well, we all know which one is number one. Of course. We all know which one is number one. How many shots Coutoua. on target were there in that game, Shaq? Coutoua how many, how many saves did you make? I don't know. I've, you know, I've, I've never watched that game over. I've never watched the game over. I've seen snippets, but I've never, I've never. Wow, I've that never is so different to the LeBeouf household, where the final is just on a loop from 1998. 
Every Sunday. Oh my God. Every Sunday, no, the no, entire no, family no. has to watch the 98 <laughs> final over again. <laughs> I've never that, watched that's that not game, true. That's not true. I watched it like three three times. I think I watched it three times. Yeah. That's it. In You're 23 watching years. The Swedish from Dad's Have you watched the FA Cup final back? Oh, oh. I don't know. That oh. heart. No. Nope. Uh, yes. I've watched that either. Yes. I've seen Twice. the goal a few times because not you, Frank. Dan shows it every year. <laughs> every FA Cup final, every year he shows it. That's Dan. Craig, you've shown yeah. me your goal at Anfield a million times. I haven't. Yes, you have. You've never seen that goal. I have seen both of the goals. Have you? Yes, you've showed it to me. I didn't show it to you. Definitely showed it to me. Yeah, you sent it. You sent it ten times to me. <laughs> you sent it ten times to me. <laughs> you asked for it. <laughs> On WhatsApp. You asked for it. Right? You asked to see it, and there's an absolutely no doubt. That's true. Right? It's one of the greatest goals ever scored at the Cop. Yes. That left foot volley from 30 That's yards true. in the top corner. Yeah. They, they applauded. Yeah. They also applauded the header that went in. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh. Hennessy was man of the match. I showed you the goal I scored against Shaq. Uh, yes, I think so. Courtois got man of the match. When he was on his yeah. way. Did you, you get man everybody, Craig? You showed everybody. <laughs> Did you get man of the match, Shaka, for your World Cup performance? Dwight York did. Oh, oh well, you can't have done that well. I got it. I got it in some publications, but I think whoever was the broadcaster for the game uh, on the day, the official broadcaster, gave it to Dwight. Oh. What were you searching publications? Shaka's <laughs> <laughs> got for every newspaper. Setting with, <laughs> set with a coffee in the morning with I like stacky papers. Hmm. Oh dear. Who was who was uh, man of the match for I the World did. Cup final, Frank? Well, I guess you know Zidane. the guy who scored two goals. Zidane. Uh, Zidane. No. Uh, of course. Oh, damn it, Zidane. Take it away. Your credit uh, yeah. for Frank. What's one hypothetical yeah, move that PSG can make to come closer to their goal of winning the Champions League? What's one hypothetical move that PSG uh, can make? Oh, uh, <laughs> they have to find a defensive mid midfielder. Really, right. if I have to, something to shout to the 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 the, the board of PSG. Buy somebody who knows how to defend in the middle of the park. I've said that for 10 years, and I'm still saying that it would make a difference. So I don't know, pick a name. Uh, Fabinho, maybe, or I don't know, somebody else, but somebody who can, who know how to defend. Uh, Remember they had some success putting Marquinhos in there for a while. Mm. Does that work for you, Frank? No, I'm only saying they yeah. put him in there for a little bit, but you know, I just thought I'd throw that in there. Well, they, a little nugget. No, a little no. nugget of... Uh, yeah. of uh, six saves, apparently, Shaka, you made in that game. Wow. Was that all? <laughs> yes. I guess I, I guess I intimidated Ibrahimovic and Larson. I was too uh, intimidating for did. those two. <laughs> they had 17 shots off target as well, apparently. Oh, they did. Sweden. <laughs> did they? Yeah. Well, he's, he's, off, he's off putting having, having him in goal, isn't it? Uh, that is it. Shaka, are you in the studio with us tomorrow? <laughs> are you bothering tomorrow, Shaka? Are you going to bother? Are you going to try? Oh, oh, thanks. You're going to try a tap tomorrow? What am I Come out your house. I mean, we made a lot, made I'll a lot show of effort. i that Sweden game. Right, there you are. Uh, Frank, I'll see you at my house in July, maybe. Uh, no, you're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> uh, we'll be back tomorrow then to reflect. England, Germany. To reflect Huge. on England against Germany. In Germany. Wow. Why no? Is Archie going? I don't know. It was a random question. <laughs>